there everyone. Welcome to Poor Painting with Ron. I hope you've been really well since the last time we saw each other. Well today I thought I would do um, a bloom pour again. Um, I will go through the recipe in a moment for you if you haven't seen one of my bloom pour ones before. But today I'm going to be using a few different colours that I haven't tried before just to see what pops up. Now I'm going <coughs> excuse me well the canvas I'm going to be using today is this um, 45 centimeter square canvas. Now I've made sure it's nice and tight and I've taped off the back as usual and put in a few giant push pins to keep it off the surface of the table. Now the recipe for or the recipe for a bloom pour is really quite a bit different to um, ordinary um, pour painting you may do um, but basically it's got three layers you have a, a pillow layer that the paints the colors slide over then you've got the color layer and then you have um, the layer on the top that you swipe with to create the the beautiful lacing effects in this technique now usually I use a white house paint for my pillow paint but today I'm going to use black so I just got ordinary <clears throat> um, acrylic wall paint. Um, it's a Roisin wall paint and I had it tinted to black. Use the, the black as black you can find. Right, so that's my pillow that the colors go over. Now the pouring medium we use for the, the color layer on the top is a mix of varnish. I use um, Joe Sonia's gloss varnish and um, untinted house paint. Now I use Oh, what was it? Three parts of the untinted house paint to two parts of the varnish. Now this it says sometimes hardware shops are a bit dumb and they say oh we don't sell untinted house paint but they do. Just have a look at the tin and it has um, untinted and it says, mine says extra bright. I like the extra bright because it keeps the, the colors true. Some people use deep base, which apparently works well too. So you need three parts of that to two parts of the varnish. And then to that you add the colour. And you add um, one part of the colour to three parts of your pouring medium. Clear as mud? Anyway, um, the colours I'm going to use today um, that I'll mix with my pouring medium are all Joe Sonia's colours. Um, they're nice and highly pigmented. They work really well for this technique. I've picked up Australian Outback colours today. So I'm using some burgundy, some pine green, some, what's this one? Turner's yellow and some rich gold. So that they should look lovely together. So I've I usually mix up quite a lot of these with the pouring medium and I put them into these uh, little squirt bottles and they last for ages because you don't use a lot in a painting and before each painting you can just give it a bit of a shake and then it's ready to go for your next painting. Right and then the layer on the top that you swipe with to create your lacing effects or the bloom effect um, is a mix of paint and flow troll. Now usually it doesn't matter what color you use, usually I use um, either white or black, but today I'm going to use red. Now the best brand to, to use for this is the Amsterdam paints, they work really well. So today I'm using the, what is this one? What red? It's red. Yeah, Naptol, Naptol Blood Red. Is it? No? Naptol Red Deep. Forgive me. My, my tongue is tied today. So red anyway, and I mix one part of that to two parts of Australian flow troll, and I swipe that over the top. Now I have all of that written on the side. If you've forgotten the recipe, feel free to pause it and write it down if you need to. The rest will become clear as we go. Let's get started. Righto, hopefully you can see this. Now the first step is to put your pillow paint onto the canvas. Don't be shocked at how much I use. A lot of it will be um, spun off the canvas later on, but you don't want to run the risk of not having enough to spread out your bloom painting. 
Uh, black is always very messy. I'll just peel off a few bits of gunk here. Oh, okay. So I'll just pour it in the middle. Now I do want to have a, like a bit of a square. It's gone up a lot in price lately. I think COVID has had something to do with that. Let's see, maybe that'll do. Don't know exactly how much I poured on there. Um, might be enough. Maybe a little bit more. Doesn't feel doesn't feel heavy enough. I guess it's not really more than you would use for like a flip cut pour or something. Just seems rather a lot <laughs> when you just pour it out of the can. Okay, we'll see how we go with that, shall we? Now I'll just give it a bit of a, a torch to pop some air bubbles. I just mixed it so I think there's there's quite a few air bubbles in there just pop that one there okay now the next step is to put your color layer on so I said it was one part of the color to two parts of the pouring medium now I'll just give them a bit of a shake before I pop them on I might put the, the green on first. Green for like gum leaves of Australia, I thought. Now this is a, like a drizzle pour. Okay, so I'll just like make a square shape of color. And it just sits on top of your pillow. That's what it's it's supposed to do. It's not supposed to sink into your pillow pan. That'll do, I think. Okay, then I'll put some of the burgundy. Nice colour, this one. I just mix these up before. So I don't really need to shake them that much. Okay, so just drizzling it on. Like so. And then I'll do the turner's yellow. Not as bright as normal yellow. Works well with the burgundy and the green, I think. More um, like sand looking or natural looking. Like if you see the Aboriginal paintings, the, the ochre yellow that they use is sort of this sort of colour. Okay, now I use plenty of gold. So I don't want the painting to be really dark. This will be nice and shiny when it dries and is varnished. Now you may wonder how in the world is this going to turn into an interesting painting? Well, the magic happens when we swipe with the Floetrol and Amsterdam paint mix. Right, let's put the paints aside. Okay, now this is my mix of one part Amsterdam paint and two parts Floetrol. This is supposed to be the thinnest, thinnest mix of, of paint. 
I like to keep it on a bit of a the thicker side. Some people do it thinner, like with three parts flow troll. But I like I like this consistency because the, the lacing tends to keep its shape a little bit better when you stretch it out. Now some people like drizzling it in the middle and blowing it out with a blow dryer or their mouth. That can work, of course. Um, I like swiping it out using either a palette knife or what I'm going to use today, just some playing cards. I find these work really well for this technique. Now I'm going to put it onto a, like a, a wall scraper, paint scraper, and I'll dip the card into that. So I'll just pour it on like so. You don't need to mix up a lot because a little bit goes a long way. Okay, I'll use the Queen of Hearts. Okay, now I'll dip the card in and see how it looks like there. You want a nice, nice layer of paint across your card. And then you drag it across like you're decorating icing on a cake. You don't want to push it all the way into the paint, but you do want to push hard enough so you can drag the colors outwards. Now you don't have to go all the way to the edge because that's all going to come off anyway. Clean your card. So you can see the lacing effects happening already. And then I'll start at the middle and I'll go this way. I find I've got more control with a card than with a palette knife for some reason. Dragging outwards. I'm just wiping it clean between each swipe. Okay, and then we'll swipe this way. I'll turn my card around and use the other side. Now I'll do these corners. Like so. I need to put a bit more paint on, I think. I don't play cards, but someone gave me these at one stage. So I'll use them for painting instead. This last one. I'm not pushing hard, just hard enough to drag the paint out. You don't want to take all the black with you. Okay. Now it's a bit skinnier now, so I'm just using the end of the card to do these ones. You do need to give a bit of time for the lacing to develop before you do anything else with it. Put a bit more paint on. Now I mixed up 10 grams of Amsterdam and 20 grams of Floetrol and that's enough for a painting of this size. Again you can mix up more than you need and just Keep it in a squeeze bottle. 
So most work for one of these paintings is mixing all the paints. So if you, if you can mix up a lot, it saves you work later when you want to do another painting. Almost there. So don't go all the way to the edge because that's all going to get go off my canvas anyway. I'm more or less um, uh, more or less looking at the middle of my canvas there. Okay. Now I think that should be enough. Let's put these aside. Now, um, what I, I do like to do with my paintings, and you don't have to do this, of course, is um, wreck it a bit, which means run a skewer through it um, to create some interesting lines through the painting. So I'll just find out where my sort of like middle is, and I'll just put a general wavy line like that. Oh, fly. And I'll just go like that. Like that. Now you don't want to get too carried away if you're going to do these. But do, they do create some interesting effects when you spin it out. Now I might just do one like that. Like that. Um, like that. Like that. Like that. All right. Now I use it, usually like to let it sit for a minute or two before I spin it out. As you've probably noticed, we've got more lacing happening here. So I'll give it a little bit of time to do that. Otherwise, you'll just end up with a big patch of color in the middle. So while I'm waiting, I'll just go out and rinse, rinse this um, and this. And then by the time I come back, it'll be ready to spin out. So I'll see you soon. OK, now this is what I use to spin out my paintings. Um, as I said, some people like putting a blow dryer over them and then tilting them to get their interesting designs. But I like spinning it out. Now underneath, I've just got a plastic banding wheel that I got from the art shop. I think they use it in ceramics and pottery. It's just $17. Spins really well. And because I use some bigger canvases, I just put a thin piece of plywood on the top with double-sided tape and I've just put some double-sided tape on the top to stop my canvas from sliding sliding off. If you center it pretty well it usually doesn't slide off. It's only if you've got it off that that will happen. Okay so I'll just get my canvas and put it on the board and then we'll see the magic happen. Okay here we go. Now I'll just put it diagonally over the board. And I'll just turn it a bit just to see if I can center it a bit. Just keeping my eye on the center. The gold looks really nice. Don't know if the camera picks it up. OK. All right, now I'll just give a bit of a spin, see where everything is going. You see the pillow? goes out to the outside taking the paint with it. Okay now a lot of it's going this way so what I might do is move the canvas that way a bit. It forces the paint to go that way a bit more. Okay two corners are covered. This one needs to be covered a bit more. See, it's looking nice, isn't it? Now 
We're almost there. on it somewhere uh, that looks like a bit of a lump there and there I'll just get my skewer and see maybe it's just an air bubble that was a bit of a lump of paint really I can do about that I'm afraid I'll just spin a little bit more now you don't want to over spin it because you end up losing a lot of your color I think my black had some hard lumps in it and there's not much you can do about it when it pops out on your painting so you'll just have one or two little bumps on your painting when it dries now I can't get it out because I'll, I'll ruin ruin my pattern okay but I think that looks lovely now I'll just let it drip for a little bit and then I'll bring it up onto the table and I'll bring you in for a closer look. Okay, I've got the phone over my head. Hopefully you can see the painting. And you see, I think it turned out really lovely. Bit of a pity that there were those couple of lumps of paint in there, but as I said, there's nothing you can do about that. You can see the, a nice mix of colors there I love the red lacing looks a bit more pink in the camera than it really is it's more red in real life you see the little black spots um, they're air bubbles that were in the pillow paint that have popped and when they pop you get the, the pillow layer showing underneath I only just mixed up the black today so there's probably a few more air bubbles in there than I would like, but you can never totally get rid of them. And you can see the colors better if I go off the edge of the painting a bit, I think. But you get the idea, I hope. So what did you think? I think it turned out really nice. I really like this color combination and I hope you could get a bit of an idea of the colors. My camera didn't really quite pick them up too well. They sort of like dulled and the red looked pink, but it's really bright red and it looks lovely with, uh, with the green and the burgundy and the gold. Should look lovely when it's, when it's dry. A bit disappointed with the lumps in there, but there, there's nothing you can do about that. Um, well, Perhaps that's a technique you'd like to have a go at yourself if you haven't done it before. Really quite a bit different to other pore painting techniques and you get some really stunning results, especially if you experiment a bit with your lacing colors and the colors you combine them with on the top. Looks, looks just really beautiful. Um, it's time for me to clean up, I'm afraid, and time for you to go. But as usual, if you enjoyed what you saw today, please take a moment to press the like button. And if you'd like to see more of my content, please take a moment to subscribe and press the notification bell. Well, I hope you have a really good week ahead and I look forward to seeing you again next time. In the meantime, happy painting.